This is Valley News Live at 5. We begin with breaking news. Grand Forks County has alerted all departments that a foreign country has hacked their email server. Officials say the sheriff's office emails will be inaccessible until further notice. If you need to contact the sheriff's office, you can reach them at the number on your screen, 780-8280. West Acres Mall is setting the record straight after a recent media report said a woman was followed around the mall. The report has been met with widespread community concern. In a statement this afternoon, West Acres Mall says it conducted an internal investigation from the day in question, and they can confidently say that at no time was the woman threatened or followed. The statement says in part, at no time did the two people have any interaction, nor did the accused ever so much as glance at the woman. A guard did escort the unnamed woman to her car, which West Acres says they'll always do if a patron asks. Over a thousand Fargo residents woke up to this late last night. An emergency alert. Over 12 hours later, the city released a statement explaining why. At 11.54 last night, an employee accidentally sent the monthly test alert out to 55,000 people. Only about 7,600 made it to the recipient's phones. Tonight on Valley News Live at 6, we'll hear from some people who were woken up by those calls and notifications. More great weather today, but our weather team has their eyes on a system that might disrupt our warm streak next week. First, let's hear about this evening. Hutch? Andrea, thanks so much. Sunshine for almost all areas showing up on the satellite and radar is a little bit of a weather disturbance working its way into the arrowhead of Minnesota. Other than that, we're extremely mild and it is almost 70 degrees in Mobridge, South Dakota. We made the 50s today in Grand Forks, in Jamestown and in Hallock. Beautiful weather across the region. A cool 39 right now in Wadena. Here's a look at your planning forecast. We will slip into the 30s late tonight and we'll see a few clouds, but by and large, it looks like a beautiful, beautiful evening here and in Grand Forks. Now the warm weather just keeps getting warmer as we rid ourselves of snow across the valley. We'll have details on that weekend warm up and we do have an update on our midweek storm system that's heading our way. I'll have all of that here, Andrea, in just a few moments. All right, thanks, Hutch. A 16-year-old male is now being cited after a crash in Polk County. It happened this morning at 735 when the sheriff's office responded to a motor vehicle accident with injuries. Officials say 30-year-old Jamie Baker was eastbound on County Road 23 when he was hit by a 16-year-old male driving southbound. Baker was taken to a hospital with injuries that are not life-threatening. The 16-year-old male was treated and then cited for failure to yield. A teenager is recovering after a crash in Hubbard County on Tuesday. Authorities responded to a single vehicle crash around midnight just south of Benedict. Police learned that a 16-year-old girl from Walker swerved to avoid hitting a deer. She lost control of the car and drove through a ditch before hitting a tree. She was taken to a hospital with injuries. Lawmakers are continuing to debate what action to take following complaints of sexual harassment by North Dakota Representative Luke Simons of Dickinson. Last week, the state's legislative council released years worth of notes and documentation of interactions between Simons and legislative attorneys. The notes describe situations where Simons gave staff unsolicited shoulder massages, discussed shopping for thongs for his wife and other apparently in quotes really creepy behavior. Simons has said in the past week, as well as in the documents, that much of the content was taken out of context and that he was joking. There's no decision yet, but a final determination could happen soon. Yesterday, we told you about two -year -old, uh, a two-year-old named Royce who was seriously injured in a house fire in Enderlin, North Dakota. We've got an exciting update for you. You helped raise over $10,000 to help out Royce's family on his long road to recovery in a Minneapolis hospital, and it's not too late to contribute. Just head over to your VNL News app and click on this story. It has a link to Royce's GoFundMe page. There is concern that some of the most vulnerable Americans, people unable to leave their homes, are being left behind in vaccination efforts. More than 1,100 members of the Texas National Guard were recently deployed to help vaccinate people who are elderly or too sick to get around. Nikki Batiste shows us how a nonprofit home visit nurse program in New Jersey is also trying to reach homebound people who are not vaccinated. I'm carrying something that's so valuable, so yeah, I'm going to watch every little thing I do with it. Packing up vaccines in a temperature control cooler. Don't jiggle it, don't shake it. 
It's like liquid gold. You're carrying this. It's, you know, let's hope that this changes the crazy world we're in. Nurse Peggy Lassoff hits the seaside roads of New Jersey, making a special kind of house call. What one am I getting, by the way? You're getting Moderna. She's administering first doses of COVID-19 vaccines to homebound patients, the elderly and those suffering from medical conditions who can't get to a vaccine site. We joined Lassoff as she went to them, house by house, for hours. Lassoff is a crucial part of a pilot phase the New Jersey Visiting Nurse Association Health Group has launched, which could become a framework for the nation. I'm Peggy. They're very appreciative. They've been nervous and scared because they obviously can't get out to get it. The longtime nurse gave 79-year-old Vincent Newland his first COVID-19 vaccine. He has heart disease, lung disease, kidney disease, and uh, multiple myeloma. So he has a lot going on. His daughter, Tyann, told us her dad's dose came after an unexpected phone call. They called us and said that they were starting a pilot program and if he would be interested in getting it if they did. It was just like, yeah, like, you want to do it now? They're kind of living in the shadows. They're easy to forget about, but there are parents, there are elders, and uh, they need our help. Dr. Steve Landers leads the health group. He and his nurses treat 10,000 people in New Jersey on any given day. The states have not prioritized giving the home health agencies themselves vaccine products. So there's, you know, there's over 12,000 home health agencies across the country, and they serve these millions of homebound people. I see constituents every day who are in their 70s, 80s, 90s who can't get vaccines. New Jersey State Senator Vingo Powell says his office has received countless calls from the homebound. So he contacted New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy. I've raised it directly with him that we need to move away from this open portal system. This needs to be done in a more targeted approach. What was Governor Murphy's reaction in general? Did he seem to understand We'll look into it and some we'll get back to you. What do you say to state officials who seem to have the power to expedite this process? I've been speaking to everybody I can about the importance of focusing on the homebound. I think that the message is getting through. I didn't even feel it happening. Mm -hmm. That's a good thing. Officials say that as vaccine supply increases, mobile options to reach vulnerable populations will be incorporated. Polk County Public Health is reaching out to those 65 years and older who would like to be vaccinated. The health department says it's making great progress with COVID-19 vaccine distribution in the community. If you or someone you know is over 65 and has not been vaccinated, you can reach out to your health care provider or your pharmacy. You can also contact Polk County Public Health at the phone number on your screen, 218-281-3385. Some schools in Minnesota, including Moorhead, are heading back to in-person classes for the first time next week. And that can be a stressful time for students, parents, and teachers. Students should remember two things, structure and support. Structure comes from knowing where your backpack is, so you don't have to rush in the mornings. And if you bring a lunch, prepare it. You need to have support by talking to someone about the struggles you're having. Parents should provide that space where you can have your kids try, fail, and then try again, knowing everything is going to be okay. Teachers, never forget about your self-care. Provide that time to sit down and breathe if you're feeling overwhelmed. Break things down into smaller bits right now because things change pretty quickly. <laughs> we want to have some expectations, but we also want to have flexibility. It's really important to know where we are right now. How am I doing today? Teachers should let parents know when their students are struggling and vice versa. This provides a positive circle between student, parent and teacher causing less stress. Fargo, West Fargo and Moorhead Public Schools are releasing their upcoming prom plans after prom was canceled last year. Fargo school officials say prom will be at Davies High School on April 10th, North High School on April 17th and South on April 24th. West Fargo officials say their prom will be at Cheyenne High School on April 24th and West Fargo High School on May 1st. And in Moorhead, school officials say they're focused on getting back to full in-person learning on Monday and they do not have prom details at this time. Weekly jobless claims edged higher last week, but not quite as high as analysts had expected. The Labor Department reports that 745,000 people applied for first-time jobless benefits. That's 9,000 more than last week, but lower than analysts had expected. 
Continuing claims, or the number of people applying for benefits for two weeks or more, fell by 124,000 to 4.3 million people. Analysts had expected a larger jump in unemployment numbers following the winter storm in Texas, which may have pushed claims downward. The Bison are back on the road this weekend, traveling to Springfield, Missouri, to take on Missouri State for their third game of the spring season. The pregame show starts at 1. Kickoff is set for 2 o'clock. You can catch all the action on KVLY. Even more discount stores are coming to small towns near you. That's next on Valley News Live at 5. Another brilliant start to the day captured by our tower cam on time lapse this morning as the sun arose. Temperatures also rose this afternoon into the 50s in Carrington, Jamestown, Grand Forks, Devils Lake and Cavalier. Your hour by hour forecast shows more mild weather ahead and we'll talk about the wild weather next week right after this.